So you have established your criteria. You have made a digital image that will become your badge. How do you now use Moodle to issue that badge? Well, you're about to learn. Here we go. So what you're going to do is on every Moodle page in the administration block, there is a section for badges. If you click on the triangle next to that, it will open up two options, manage badges or add a new badge. And if I went into manage badges, I would see all the badges already in my course with hot links to who, have, who has received them. And I could, I also have an add a new badge button at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And if you remember from my last tutorial, I created a badge for surviving the winter of 2013-2014. And so I can go ahead and do this. So I'm going to give it a name. So we're going to call it the Polar Vortex Badge. And in the description, you want to lay out your criteria. Now, mine is going to be really um, silly because this is not a real badge. But um, the more concrete it is and the more you can define the criteria so that students don't have any guesswork on what they need to do or what they need to know or what skill they need to have in order to earn the badge, the better. But mine, of course, is made up. So um, recipients of this badge must live through the winter of 2013-14 and never have complained about it to their teacher. Okay, I got some spelling errors. In Moodle, you can hold down the control key and click on the word and you can find the correct word. Um, I will do that with those two. All right. Now, you can just drag and drop your image here. If you remember, if you, in the Build a Badge workshop, I used the um, web page, the Badge Designer web page, and when you click on the Download button, um, what happens is your bad Im a badge image goes into your Downloads folder. So I, on my Mac, um, what I usually do is click on this little guy to open my Finder. Uh, which is a window to all my files on my computer. I go to my downloads folder and I have mine sorted by date. So the newest things that I've downloaded are at the top. You can do a sort if you um, click in here, like on that button and go to arrange by date added is what I have. All right, so I'm gonna make this window smaller so I can take my badge. I think I'm gonna rename it. So I'm gonna single click on it and then I'm going to single click on it again after I pause so I can call it Polar Vortex. All right. Then I click off of it to accept the name. All right. Okay. I drag and drop it on top of there. And that is done. Now, teacher name should go here. So I'm going to type in Terry Osland. And I don't like the underscore so or the hopkinsk 12mnus because we're trying to wean off of that. So I'm going to do hopkinsschools.org. All right. And you can set an expiration date. So if it's a skill that needs to be renewed, you can do that, but I'm not gonna do that for this one. So then I hit create badge. And now what I need to do, those were my details. So now I need to go across this way and, and have a couple other things that I wanna do. In this first example, I'm just gonna teach you how to create a badge that you would manually issue. So teachers would, um, you know, just literally go in and um, it's not automated in any way is what I mean. So I'm going to click here and I'm going to say that this is a badge that will be awarded by manually by teachers, teachers on that course page. And it doesn't matter what I check here. It would matter if I selected more than one role, but I'm just going to have the teacher um, issue the badge. So I click save and then I go over to message. And um, there is a default message, and this is what gets emailed out to the students. And it gets emailed out to whatever is their email address in the student profile, so which by default is the student's Hopkins apps address. You may change, if you'd like, the message uh, subject line. And um, these, this little symbol here with the percents around it, this just means that it's going to pull the actual name of the badge that you established when you were in the details. 
So for the, mo and this is a hyperlink to um, the link to the students' badges if they want to see their badges. So generally speaking, you can leave this as the default unless you want to customize it in some way, which you totally can do. If you as the badge creator want to get notified when these emails go out, you may do that. But in this case, I'm manually issuing them, so that's not necessary for me. Um, I didn't make any changes, so I'm not going to click Save Changes there. But my last step is then to say, well, OK, I'm a, now that I've set this all up, I want to enable access. You want to be really, really careful because once the badge has been issued, you cannot change the criteria. Also, if you kind of screw up your criteria, you can't actually revoke a badge. Although I do believe that in a coming version, a new version of Moodle, that revoking badges is going to be an option. My last step is to click on the Enable Access button, and then I click Continue. And if I go to Overview, this is now an overview of that badge. And if I want to do Award It, I could click here on award badge and when you do that you have the option to pick from enrolled students in this course so they would need to be students that are enrolled in your course page first all right that's it that is how you manually set up or that's how you set up a badge that's going to be manually issued by the teacher